Hey guys, Chief Tiger here. Just wanted to give you an update on my movement system for Unreal Engine 4 that I've been working on uh, using the HTC Vive's motion controllers. So in the original, I showed you that if you held in the grip buttons you and you moved your hand back and forth, it would move you forward. And the slower you moved it, the slower you could walk. Faster, faster you'd walk. Just like that. Well, <laughs> I've done a whole lot more changes, uh, especially regarding collision. So um, I just kind of wanted to go over those with you guys. As far as the uh, actual movement, I sort of tinkered with the settings a little bit, but not terribly much. Um, I did make it to where I can walk with either controller. So with my right controller, if I move it with the grip buttons pressed, it works the same way. And uh, this is the max speed with one hand here. And uh, I will run around here just a little bit to show you that so you can see about how fast I'm moving and uh, someone in the reddit comments from my last thread suggested that if you are running with both controllers that you should get a slight speed boost because you're making yourself more vulnerable by not being able to uh, aim essentially so I went ahead and did that actually so here's the max speed with one hand and then here's with two hands so you can see I'm running 50% faster, precisely. So, and this thing's really easy to aim, uh, especially when you're running with two hands. So you can see I can just kind of like ran through that narrow corridor. I can turn back around, run through this one, turn back around. So there's really, like, <laughs> you th you think it's it's kind of it feels kind of slidey at first, but once you get used to it, it's pretty easy to navigate with. Um, so if I let go of one controller, I slow down again. Start running again, let go over the left controller, and sometimes you just keep moving your hand. But so in an instance, like I'm running from an enemy, and I want to shoot at him, take some pot shots, start running with both hands again. So you can see, I want to get behind some cover, take some shoot, shoots, some shoots, yeah. So definitely uh, worked that out pretty well, um, working really well. Again, you can still interact with physics objects with your body, just like that. But I did make a change to collision with walls. So before, you saw that if I ran into a wall with my play space here, that it would stop at the play space and not the actual player position. Well, that no longer happens. If I want to run into this wall, it will let me run all the way into it and then stop me when I hit it. So that is uh, definitely more immersive, I feel. So one thing you'll notice with this uh, new collision system is that if I run into a wall and I move just slightly forward, it'll give me a little grayscale version of the world and it'll give me a timer that says it's going to revert my position. So if, let's go ahead and do that. So I ran into the wall, now I'm looking in the wall, it says reverting position, and it will teleport me back out just like it does in a popular game called Call of the Starseed. Um, I don't know if it's exactly how they do their their darkening. I didn't really look into it. I just kind of tinkered with some post-process settings there. So um, it's like that for any object you look inside of or any, any, uh, oh, I'm kind of stuck on the wall here. So like this, this square right here is also physical if I was to look inside of it or just, or just collide with it even. It gives me that reverting position timer. So <clears throat> that's a new thing I can I designed to uh, allow a little bit easier to navigate the world and a little bit easier level design so you can walk through hallways and stuff. So, uh, ramps. Ramps are fun. <laughs> if I, in my last video, if I walked into a ramp, it was setting basically whichever side of the play space was closest to the ramp, that was the height, and then everything else was levitating. Well, not anymore. You now are positioned on the ramp according to where your player is positioned. So I can run up this ramp, kind of sit at the top here and look at that, look at that square down there. I can run down the ramp and it's still in my position. And I can jump off the ramp and it kind of does a little hop down. So with small jumps like that, it doesn't change your, your camera at all. You just kind of fall down. Um, also, you'll notice that I fall off where I'm at and not on my play space. So if I get close here and I just kind of like walk off the edge, 
it'll make me fall down. And if I try to go back in, it'll collide with it, of course. So you can't just like run up to the side of a ramp here and be like, haha, I'm going to teleport on top of the ramp. Oh, darn it. No. You have to enter at a point where your feet could actually walk up the ramp, essentially. So if you fall off of the ramp at a high height, you get the same visual effect that you get when you're inside of a wall, except without the timer. And you fall really fast to try to prevent motion sickness. Now, <laughs> falling, I'm, I'm used to it, so it doesn't really give me motion sickness, even without the, the camera effect. I don't know if the camera effect actually does anything. I'm going to leave that up to you guys to decide, because I'm actually going to supply this demo in the comments of the YouTube video. So feel free to download it, test it out. Um, and just let me know what you think. If you have people who are prone to motion sickness, have them jump in it, give it a little bit of a test, see what they don't like, what they think could be improved to make it less less motion sicky. Um, I did look into like setting it instantly on the ground, but I felt that was kind of disorienting. But it it's it's really just a matter of compromise at this point. So you'll notice here again if I just walk up the edge. I fall, and if your collision model is inside the wall when you fall like that close, it'll give you, it'll start giving you the timer once you hit the ground. Um, another thing I can do is actually jump, jump to a. Oop, I didn't get far enough to the side there. There we go. You can actually jump to an object. So I'm gonna take a running start and jump to this guy. He made it, so now I'm on top of this. And I can jump down. So. And over here we have our nice ball pit that we can play in. Smack some balls around. Move with the right controller. So, yeah, fun stuff. Um, one thing you'll notice is if you run into a wall, another thing you'll notice, you'll notice a lot of things. If you run into a wall while, uh, while you're running, it will stop you like this just instantly, and that might be a little... I've I've gotten comments from some of my friends who have tested it that said that's kind of weird, especially if it's like a small edge of a ramp and you're just like running, you're not paying attention, then you just suddenly stop. It could kind of jar you. Um, but one thing you'll notice is if you are not walking and you get like a running start at a wall and you just let go of the grips right before the wall, you'll kind of slide into it. And I'll kind of demonstrate that here. So I slid into it, you can see. And that is because <laughs> if I didn't do that, then what would happen is if you walk up to a wall like this, you wouldn't be able to get inside of it like that. You would, you would walk up to it, and then you would get pushed away from it in the game. And basically, it would be really disorienting. This was actually one thing that kind of like took me for a loop, was if you try to walk into the wall, <laughs> and it just keeps you there while you continue walking in the real world, it's, it's a lot... It's really weird. I wouldn't recommend doing that ever. So that's that's why you slide in the walls when you uh, run into them and let them go of the grips. So, but don't worry, the timer will teleport you out. And those safe locations are determined based on if your play space, the maximum play space, is colliding with anything. So as long as I'm not colliding with anything, it's a safe location. Um, now, a ramp. You, so, so you might think, oh, well, what if you're at the top of this ramp and your play space is like this? So it's technically not colliding with anything, but if I was to fall off of this ramp and stick in the, the floor or stick in the wall after I fell, where would it teleport me? Would it teleport me back up here and then I'd just fall again because I'm on that side of the play space? Well, no, because I actually have little boxes at each corner of this play space that do traces to the ground and they check for if any of them are different from each other. So if any corner is different from the other, it will not save it as a safe location. So this would not be a safe location. So if I want to demonstrate here, if I fall and I get reverted, it's going to revert me somewhere back here because that was the last safe location where nothing was colliding and all the tracers down were the same distance. So. I believe that just about covers everything I've been working on. It's definitely been interesting trying to get all this to work just because of 
how uh, you have to do the collision with, with ramps and objects and such like that. It's just it's definitely a wild ride. But uh, go ahead and uh, if you're up for it, you have a VR headset or a Vive in this case, uh, check out that download in the description of the video. And uh, don't walk off the edge of the map because you'll start flying. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. A, a grayscale version of it with a timer that says reverting position in three, two, one, and then it'll teleport you. Um, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs>